You probably know that ants are among the most ancient creatures in all of Middle-earth, but do you know why they were first created? And did you know that the dwarves were highly involved? To begin, let's remind ourselves about what we know of the ants. They first appear in the Third Age to us as the Tree Shepherds in Fangorn Forest. There, an ancient ant named Treebeard encounters the halflings Merry and Pippin, who had become separated from the Fellowship of the Ring. By that time, the number of ants in Arda, the name of Earth in Tolkien's world, had dwindled so low that most of the inhabitants of the world had no idea they even existed. It was estimated that only 50 remained, but they were powerful. The evil Melkor, one of the old gods of Middle-earth, created the trolls as an evil version of the Ents, but Treebeard revealed that the trolls were far weaker than any Ent ever was. The Ents' populations shrunk simply because the women of their race had disappeared. Despite their power, by the end of the Third Age, it seemed that the end of the Ents was near. But why did they even come into existence in the first place? For a simple answer, we can look at the dwarves. Before elves, men, or ents, the only sentient creatures on Arda were the Valar and the Maiar, which were these very powerful gods who controlled and wielded natural forces. Among them, the god most interested in transforming the Earth's natural resources into beautiful arts and crafts was the god known as Aule. This god loved creating things so much that he also wanted to create his own children. So he did just that. He used the materials of Arda to fashion dwarves into existence. And with the help from the god above him, Eru Iluvatar, who was the father of all in the universe, Ale was able to create the dwarves and make them actual beings with independent thought. But Ale's wife, a goddess known as Yavanna, was afraid. If the dwarves were anything like their father Ale, then they would surely be just as obsessed with forging and creating things. That meant Yavanna's forest, which she planted so carefully, would be chopped down to feed their fires. So to catch up, we've said a few interesting things up to this point. One, the dwarves were created before any other sentient being in Arda. And two, Yavanna, Aule's own wife, didn't welcome his self-made children, but instead feared them. So now how did this all go into the creation of the Ents? Well, Yavanna went to the highest of their order, the king of the Valar on Arda, a man known as Manwe. Now remember, when we say God, there's a God with a little g and a God with a big G in Tolkien's universe. At this point, the big creator God is Eru Iluvatar and he doesn't dwell on Arda or even inside the physical universe. He spends his time outside, in a place beyond time and space known as the Timeless Halls. Now the Valar and the Maiar, the gods with the little g if you would, were the ones who controlled the physical world through their powers over nature. And the king of that order was this God we just mentioned, Manwe and that's who Yavanna ran to for help. She told Manwe that she was worried about all the creatures in the world, plants and animals, but most of all she was worried about her precious trees. Unlike animals that could run away from the dwarves, the trees couldn't. Manwe heard her concerns, and after hearing from Eru Iluvatar, he told her that more spirits would come into the world, and among them, spirits would embody the form of Ents. Later, when she told her husband Aule that Manwe had solved the problem for her, and that the Ents would strike fear in the hearts of Aule's dwarves if they ever tried to cut down her trees, her husband dryly responded, Nonetheless, they will have need of wood, said Aule, and he went on with his smith work. Much like a dwarf, Aule also saw practically that some things were unavoidable. The dwarves weren't the only people that used wood in Middle-earth. Melkor and his evil corrupted monsters, orcs and trolls, completely destroyed forests. And later, men would cause the great woods of Middle-earth to shrink so much that even the Ents would lose their purpose. But for a while, after the awakening of the elves and the years of the trees, until the coronation of Aragorn, the Ents would fulfill their roles as shepherds of the forest.